Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. And the first one is very, very freaky. It is Derek Lunsford, basically doing some back training and then some posing, but take a look at his back right here when he's doing this freaking rows. I mean, this has to be one of the best backs in the history of bodybuilding. And just look at how, how well he's contracting basically the entire back. Like, his connection to that back is absolutely nuts. The, the form isn't perfect, but it looks like he's contracting every single muscle fiber. And watch, watch how his back basically gets blue from the pump. Like, it's almost bruising how much, how much blood is circulating in that back while he's training it. So, that's insane. That's just a genetic freak factor. And uh, he is bringing some crazy freak factor to the Mr. Olympia 2024. And uh, is that gonna be enough for him to win again? I don't know. It might. It might, though. Take a look at this. He doesn't even need to flex that back or to hit a pose for it to look super impressive. He can basically just stand there and it looks flexed because it's that freaking insane. An interesting question would be... Did he manage to improve it? Or even better question, is it possible to make that back even better? But take a look at this. At seven weeks out, this is what it looks like. And it's insane, you know. I mean, he always is lean in the back, but he wasn't this lean a couple of weeks ago. He definitely did get quite, quite leaner, quite a bit leaner. And now it, it's starting to show, like... All the little details, all the separation, and with this width through the shoulders, is this back now better than Phil Heath back in the back double bicep or back lat spread? I mean, we'll find out soon enough once he steps on the stage, once he's completely shredded, and when he hits the actual pose, but I think Phil Heath's back double bicep is probably second best uh, in the history of bodybuilding, right after Ronnie Coleman. Uh, but, you know, he was a little bit narrow in the shoulders. I mean, it didn't really show that much in the back double because of all these crazy details. I mean, all the muscle, all the freaking uh, conditioning and, like, the lower body as well, you know, the big legs. And he was a little bit taller uh, than Derek is. And he has a little bit smaller waist, I think, from behind. He's a little bit less uh, blocky, but, like, the back itself... I don't know. I mean, Phil was phenomenal, but maybe this year Derek is gonna surpass him. Or maybe you guys feel like he already did that. He already surpassed him. I mean, as far as the back itself, you could probably make an argument for that, yeah. But I would just like to see more details in the hamstrings, and I don't know if Derek can do it with his height. He's definitely shorter than Phil, but then that back, the crazy width, the details, and like the, the lat thickness, and, and like the shoulder size, and, and arms as well from behind, like the, the width of the back, the size of it... I don't know. Close second, if you ask me. Close second. Ronnie Coleman, though? No. no I don't think that's gonna happen. Ronnie was just way too big and way too shredded and just way too impressive. So, Ronnie's the king. He's number one for sure. Especially in the back poses. But uh, Derek, yeah, close second. Second or third. And maybe this year... It's gonna end up being the second best uh, back double bicep of all time because it looks insane right now. Now, obviously, the big question is can he maintain his uh, Mr. Olympia title? Can he stay the champion? And I don't know. I think it's. I think anything is possible, really. I mean, yeah, like Hardy is probably gonna be. Uh, he's definitely gonna be more detailed, harder, more impressive from the front than Samson, who is a lot taller and bigger and has basically the same amount of muscle. It, it seems like he's gonna be shredded, but you know, Derek has that freak factor, and as they say, shows are won from the back. When he turns around. It's lights out for pretty much everybody. So guys like Hadi and Samson need to close a little bit that gap. When they turn around, they need to be closer to Derek. And then beat him from the front and from the side. If they can do that, then they can defeat the reigning champ. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of you guys are not big fans of Derek Lansford. Neither am I of his personality per se. But you gotta respect the physique, man. You gotta respect this freaking back. It's out of this world. It's absolutely insane. And it might be reason enough for him to win another, another Mr. Olympia title. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, next up, we got a physique update from Hunter Labrada at three weeks out of Italy Pro, where he's gonna potentially face uh, Rubio Mosquera. But 
After seeing what Hunter looks like, I'm pretty sure Rubio is gonna pull out of that contest. I mean, it feels like he's not gonna do it. Anyways, I mean, yeah, I know, he pulled out of the Arnold Classic, both of them, and then he pulled out of the uh, New York Pro, and he barely made it to the Dubai Pro. I mean, he wanted to quit, but his sponsors forced him to compete over there, and now it seems like he's gonna pull out of Italy Pro. Why does it seem that way? It's not only because Hunter Labrada looks crazy right now, it's because Chris Cormier doesn't know if he's gonna do it or not. That's what he said on the Menace podcast. So, you know, it feels like he's not gonna do it, and also his conditioning right now, it doesn't look very good. You know, it looks like they're gonna take some time off and, like, uh, try to do a prep, a full prep uh, with the new coach, uh, Francisco Aspen. And he probably doesn't wanna just, you know, try to fix things for a few weeks. Maybe Rubio is burnt out, maybe there's something else, maybe he's gonna actually do the show, but I feel like it's not happening. But if it happens, can he beat Hunter Labrada? I mean, with his conditioning not looking improved at all from the Dubai Pro and Hunter looking as shredded as he does, I don't think so. Now, back to Hunter, it looks like he is bringing some solid conditioning because at like three weeks out, he almost looks pretty much stage ready. And he looks massive, like really big. And it's interesting that he actually finally shaved his head so he doesn't have to wear uh, hats everywhere he goes, even when he's guest posing and so on. But he is still wearing a bandana, so he's probably not comfortable with being bald yet. But he will, I'm sure he will get rid of that as well. It's liberating once you do it. I know how it feels like. Anyways, as far as his physique, he looks really good. And you guys know that he is definitely much bigger when he is compared to the other guys than when he's standing alone. But now even standing alone, look at this. This is <laughs> this is very freaky, right? Like you know, I can I can see I can imagine him battling uh, against uh, Nick Walker for that fifth, something like that this year. He looks crazy. Look at his side tricep. One of the best side tricep in the game right now, if not the best one. The only thing that I don't love about Hunter's physique is that uh, midsection, but it's not like he has a wide waist or a bubble gut, it's just there's something off around the belly button area, you know, his stomach is kind of protruding a little, there are no deep uh, ab separations, so, you know, his stomach, it doesn't look very, very aesthetic. It's definitely drawing attention, it's taking away from the rest of his physique, like, look at the legs, legs are absolutely nuts, like, the chest separation, the size of the shoulders and the arms, just the overall thickness and, and like, size and conditioning, everything is a amazing i just hope he can find a way to maybe like flex the abs a little bit better and try and hide that area but uh, you know it is what it is everybody has flaws so does he but everywhere everything else i mean he looks phenomenal right now once again crazy conditioning for three weeks out with really good fullness and like uh, added size i think he's bigger than last year better overall uh, we'll see what kind, what kind of conditioning, what kind of peak he will bring to the Italy Pro stage, but if there is no Nexilla, there is no contest, he's gonna win that as easily as Andrew Jack won Texas Pro, and then it's all about what he can do at a Mr. Olympia. Can he be top 5 again? Is that a possibility? Can he beat Brandon Curry? I think he can, most likely this year. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, next up, we got a physique update from Behru Stabani. Uh, this was at 8 weeks out of the Mr. Olympia. Now, I don't know if he has the visa. I mean, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. If he got it, he would know about it. But hopefully he's gonna get it this year. Hopefully, third time is the charm. This is the third time he's qualified for the Mr. Olympia. And he did that this year in style. He won two pro shows. And he won, let's say, the third uh, biggest show in the world, or fourth, uh, depending on how you look at it, so Mr. Olympia, Arnold Classics, two of them, and then I would say Dubai Pro, so he's definitely a top 10 Olympian, I'm pretty sure about that, and a lot of people are actually saying that he can be even as high as like 6th, you know, that there is a possibility of him being top 5, top 6, you know, guys like uh, Dennis James, and uh, I think Vlad Sokoruchko said that on the podcast with Dennis as well. Of course, Milos believes it, but he's the biased coach. But, you know, do you guys think that's possible? Is Becker Zabani that good, that impressive, that he can end up beating guys like Hunter, like Brandon Curry, like, you know, challenge uh, guys like Nick Walker and uh, Andrew Jack and I don't know who else, like, is he really on that level? Can that happen? Is he that impressive? 
I mean, I feel like it's most likely a bit of a stretch, especially considering that this is his first, this would be his first Mr. Olympia. I do think he is a top 10 guy, but top 6, oof, I don't know, maybe 7th, 8th, I can see him there, but 6th, 5th, I don't know, I don't know, I mean, like, from the back, sure, I guess I can see it, with his crazy graininess, and, like, uh, very, very nice structure, and really good shape, really small waist, all that, yeah, he's amazing, but the quads, the quads are gonna hold him back a little, how much, though, I mean, the other guys who are in top 6 also have flaws, like, I feel like Nick Walker has more flaws than Bakrus Dabani, and it's not like Bakrus Dabani is lacking any size, I mean, he is also very, very big. In that update from two days ago, at eight weeks out, he was a 280 almost. So, he's a heavy guy. He's definitely a big guy. And I mean, the quads are not his strongest body part. But other than that, are there any other weaknesses? His waist is also phenomenal, small. The midsection is developed, like the abs are looking nice and tight. There aren't many flaws that you can find on Bakrus's physique. He can perfect his posing a little bit, and I'm sure he can do that by the Olympia. The only thing that I'm worried about is uh, how the hell did he lose to William Bonnick? I mean, we all felt like that was a robbery, but if it wasn't, if he's losing realistically to William Bonnick, then I don't think he can be top, top 5, top 6, but... If you look at his physique alone, if you forget about uh, that event, I mean, he is big, he is symmetrical, he's proportionate, he comes in in crazy conditioning, he has that uh, graininess, that hardness, he is really freaking good, and I don't think it's impossible to see him that high, to see him place above 8th or 7th at a Mr. Olympia, but let's hope he actually gets the visa, and then we'll see what he can do, but whatever you guys think as of right now, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and for more content like this guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye bye.